Interictal epileptiform discharges, which we will refer to as spikes, are brief electrographic discharges that occur in between seizures in patients with epilepsy. We use spikes clinically to help localize the seizure onset zone for surgical planning in intractable epilepsy, as the regions with the most frequent spikes are thought to be close to seizure generators. However, clinicians often find that a single patient will have multiple spatially distinct clusters of spikes. The nature of these different spike clusters is not well understood. In our study, we rigorously mapped out these different spike clusters. We looked at a group of 20 patients who underwent intracranial EEG monitoring. We first used an automatic spike detector to detect spikes. We then used k-means clustering to cluster the spikes into different populations based on their spatial location. We found that most patients had multiple spike clusters with different locations. We next looked at how the proportion of spikes in each cluster varied over time. The plot on the left shows the electrode locations for a single patient, and this patient had three spike clusters, red, blue, and green. The animation on the right shows the spike rate of each electrode, where brighter colors indicate higher spike rates. And each time step is one hour. You can see that for this patient, there is a steady high frequency of spikes in the red cluster. And at times, there are almost no spikes in the blue cluster, and at times, they appear as frequent as the red cluster. And then you can see some rare spikes in the green cluster. The majority of our patients had a change in the spike spatial distribution over time. On average, we found that 12 hours were needed to capture the variability in spike spatial distribution. And so this means that you can't just pick a spot of an hour over which to understand spike location. You need to be looking for these longer durations. We found that sleep and post-ictal state affected spike spatial distribution in a minority of patients, but there was no pre-ictal change in spike spatial distribution for any patient. Finally, we tried to answer whether spikes help localize the seizure onset zone. We first looked at spike frequency, and we found that the electrodes with the most frequent spikes were closer to the seizure onset zone than predicted by chance, about two centimeters away. We next asked whether spike propagation additionally localizes the seizure onset zone. We identified spike sequences occurring across multiple electrodes at around the same time. Zooming in on the spike and determining the timing of the spike peak, we traced the path with which the spike was detected at different electrodes across the brain. For each electrode, we calculated the area over which spike sequences that start in that electrode tend to propagate. We found that the electrodes with the broadest area of spike propagation were also closer to the seizure onset zone than predicted by chance, about two centimeters away. And so to summarize, spikes do seem to localize the seizure onset zone, but there are multiple spike populations whose spatial distribution changes over time. And a major clinical takeaway from this is that if you're using spikes to localize the seizure onset zone, you should make sure you're looking for long enough. You really need to sample about a day of data, ideally including sleep, to capture the variability in spike spatial distribution. And thank you for watching.